welcome to past people. To support my channel, please consider subscribing. The life and legacy of George IV, a figure of immense historical significance, is a tapestry woven with extraordinary tales and notable moments. From his opulent lifestyle and extravagant spending, to his tumultuous marriages and prominent role as a regent, George IV's journey through the pages of history is a captivating narrative. And in this exploration, we delve into the intricate details of his relationships, his impact on British society, and his enduring influence on the ages that bear his name, an emblem of the Georgians and a defining figure of the Regency era. George IV, during his time as a prince and later as a king, would never have experienced an ordinary existence. Nevertheless, bearing this in consideration, it becomes apparent that his life was remarkably unconventional. He held the dual titles of the Premier Gentleman of Europe and a subject of disdain and mockery. His reputation encompassed both his polished manners and captivating demeanour, alongside his excessive drinking, lavish spending habits and scandalous romantic escapades. Born on the 12th of August 1762 as the eldest prodigy of King George III and Queen Charlotte, he was bestowed the status of Prince of Wales within a few days of his birth. Queen Charlotte would eventually bring forth a total of 15 offspring, of which 13 reached maturity. Yet among his numerous siblings, George held a special fondness for his younger brother, Prince Frederick, who came into the world just a year later. His relationship with his father was marked by tension, with George III frequently voicing criticism towards his son. The complex dynamic persisted as they both matured. For instance, in 1784, when Charles Fox, a politician who shared a contentious rapport with the king, returned to Parliament, Prince George enthusiastically supported him, proudly donning the buff and blue colours associated with Fox. Naturally, there existed ample reasons for George III's reproach. Prince George navigated his romantic entanglements with a complete lack of discretion. His amorous liaisons were numerous over the years, yet his involvement with Maria Fitzherbert stands out as either legendary or stuff of parental nightmares, particularly for those of royal lineage. The Royal Marriages Act of 1772 prohibited direct heirs to the throne from marrying before the age of 25 unless granted the monarch's permission. Marriages after the age of 25 could proceed without such consent, but only upon securing the approval of both parliamentary chambers. Given her commoner status in Roman Catholic faith, the twice-widowed Mrs Fitzherbert was far from an acceptable candidate for royal matrimony. Despite these circumstances, the young prince remained resolute in his affection for her. After extracting a marriage promise from Mrs Fitzherbert, an agreement obtained under duress following a passionate episode in which George seemingly wounded himself, possibly exacerbating earlier wounds from a prior bloodletting by his physician. They secretly wed in 1785, and nonetheless the union lacked legal validity, rendering it void. Their romantic liaison endured, and their supposedly secret marriage became widely known. Finances also posed a significant concern. Prince George accumulated substantial debts throughout his extensive efforts to enhance, adorn and furnish his residences in both London and Brighton. Additionally, his lavish entertaining, stable maintenance and other princely expenses added to the financial strain. While he demonstrated significant support for the arts, and the Brighton Pavilion stands as a lasting testament, George's debts were nothing short of staggering. In 1795, he proceeded to enter into a legitimate marriage, and the arrangement involved his union with his cousin, Caroline of Brunswick, with the stipulation that his debts would be eradicated in return. However, their initial encounter presented an alarming scenario, Prince George immediately called for brandy, leaving Princess Caroline to question if his conduct was a perpetual state. She even voiced her disappointment in his appearance, and furthermore, George was intoxicated during their wedding ceremony. Predictably, the marriage descended into an utter catastrophe, prompting the couple to lead separate lives. 
Their relations failed to improve post-separation, and their offspring, Princess Charlotte, born in 1796, tragically did not inherit the throne. Her death during childbirth in 1817 triggered a profound national mourning. George's tenure as Prince Regent remains a defining aspect of his legacy. George III's first bout of apparent madness surfaced in 1788, and current beliefs suggest it may have been attributed to a hereditary ailment known as porphyria, yet he managed to recover without regency. However, after the passing of his youngest daughter, Princess Amelia, George III's health deteriorated once again in late 1810. Consequently, on the 5th of February 1811, Prince George was appointed regent. Initially, the regency imposed limitations on George's authority, set to expire after a year. However, the king's recovery failed to materialise, leading to the extension of the regency until George's accession to the throne in 1820. Notably, George IV's coronation the subsequent year remains etched in history due to an uninvited guest, his estranged wife, Queen Caroline. Upon becoming king, George IV vehemently refused to acknowledge her as queen, even excluding her name from the Book of Common Prayer. Nevertheless, Queen Caroline made an audacious appearance at Westminster Abbey, demanding entry, only to be rebuffed. Her demise followed less than a month later. By the late 1820s, George IV's health was rapidly deteriorating, compounded by his excessive alcohol consumption and long-standing battle with obesity. He ascended the throne at the age of 57 and passed away during the early hours of the 26th of June 1830. Tragically mirroring the discordant tone of his nuptials, the undertakers at his funeral were inebriated. Summing up a life as intricate and multifaceted as George IV is inherently challenging. Nonetheless, his existence spanned a period of profound societal, political and cultural transformations during which he twice lent his name to Eris, first as one of the Georgians and then as a representative of the Regency.